Hi, and welcome to today's edition of Spotlight On. Today, we are with visual artist, painter, sculptor, Rebecca Berman, joining us all the way from Denver, Colorado, my former home. And you are in for a big treat today. Hi, Rebecca. So great to see Hi. you. So Before nice to see we... Yeah, so so great to see you. So uh, I am I'm Julie Geller. I'm a musician and an artist coach. I get to work with all sorts of artists and all different media, and I really get to interview artists who's who whom I love and whose work I admire. And Rebecca definitely falls into this category. So before we even dive into speaking with you, Rebecca, I want to show people uh, we could see a little bit of your work behind you, and I want to show them even a little bit up close uh so everybody can really see what we're talking about today um we're gonna sh we're gonna be talking about your paintings of which we can see um some samplings it seems like you you have you are very uh uh what's the word i'm looking for you do a lot what's <laughs> what's the word uh it seems like you produce a lot of work so these are samples and some of the sculptures we are probably going to be speaking about as well. So I just want to give people a visual before they get to hear from you. So welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. I am delighted. It's oh. nice to be here. It's my absolute pleasure. Pleasure. So Rebecca, we met through our kids uh, when we were living in Denver, and uh, Rebecca, like me, is a mom and a wife, and um, has a wonderfully busy life with all these different pieces. And I've been really following you the last number of years. I remember talking to you maybe five years ago. And I, if I remember, tell me if I'm remembering this correctly, that you were saying like you were really starting to work on your art in a more serious way. And um, I've really just kind of been watching you from afar all these years, seeing your painting develop, seeing your, your development within uh, the world of sharing your art and selling your art and running an art studio and all of these pieces. So. Um, I want to tell you that I've I've been watching and and that people watch what we do when we That's do meaningful work. So lovely and you know slightly terrifying too in the same <laughs> in the same vein. Um, thank you. I appreciate that so much. There are some funny behind the scenes ways that I have realized that we've actually intersected. I've made some decisions based on reviews you've written, um, which is wow. pretty funny. I realized. Uh, the other day I was looking through things and I was searching for an email and I saw that I had said like, we should try this. I know this woman and she recommended it. So we should do this. Uh, it was great. It's really oh, nice. I love wonderful. that we keep sort of overlapping in ways. It feels very right. Absolutely. Thank you. And, and proving once again, that what we do has meaning really when we have the courage, especially I love to work with artists because I see the foundation of being an artist as having courage having courage and and um I'm looking at like those beautiful faces behind you and you could have just kind of said okay you know but instead you've chosen to actualize them yes and even bring them out of the basement which is like a big step so yeah so tell us about your basement <laughs> I love my basement uh so my basement is actually my kids playroom uh complete with bunk beds and legos and all and it's um, over the last couple of years, I've just like been carving out little corners of the space for myself. And now I've pretty much taken over the whole thing as my <laughs> own, uh, turned it into a fabulous art studio where I just get to make stuff. And it's, it's great. It's really great. I think that's the opposite of a pattern that many of us have, which is we slowly sort of give up our space and time and other parts of ourselves to other people, even the people we love the most. So I like that sense of claiming or reclaiming that you're that you're talking about. Yes. yes. And I did do all that first part. You know, there it is definitely a reclaiming, um, yeah. sort of kind of clawing my way back into my own life. But it's been having a space has made it made it possible for me, at least a big part of making it possible. Absolutely. And the and the and the piece before that 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 I think is like you deciding to make the space. The space never would have appeared had you not decided, okay, uh, even if it was a, an inch at a time, <laughs> the reclaiming, but it was yes. a decision to do it. Yes. A little investment in my own, my own self, which has been pretty awesome for everybody involved. So here's the question I've been waiting to ask you, because I, I find your paintings to be so evocative. There's something about the faces. There's, um, I don't think everybody's like this, but if you work with me as a coach, what I'm always looking for is emotion. 
it's just it's I think I don't think everybody is wired this way, but I think many of us we consume art and we're we're wanting to feel the emotion. And for me, when I look at your work and I see the eyes and the faces and the coloring and the angles, it is very evocative for me. So what, I don't even know what my question is, but could you talk a bit about that? Absolutely. I'm so glad to hear that. That is why I am an artist. Um, that is my goal. So uh, I had an art critique uh, like two years ago and I was first, you know, really getting serious. And somebody told me like, your, um, your pieces are confrontational. And I was like, what? Mm. Confrontational. Mm. And then they said, and, and so melancholy, so heartbroken. I was like, what? Like, I'm trying to put good in the world. My, I'm like confrontational, like mopey people. That's not, and, and they are right. So almost everything I paint has got gigantic distorted eyeballs, right? And they are almost always staring into your soul. And so they are confrontational in that my goal is that I want people to engage with them. And when they're looking right at you with these like eyeballs, it's hard to not engage with them. So I'm delighted that you feel that that sorts of that sorts of um engagement. And uh and they are emotional little beings. Um, my goal is that you look at them and you say like, oh, bless her heart or like the Southern, like bless her heart, you know, like either one is <laughs> fine, but that you engage with them. You see something in there that feels, you feel connected to. I love bittersweet, like that sort of mm -hmm. like emotional complexity and connection are the things that make me make the stuff. And also I think why people that feel connected to them do because they're, they are emotional little people. I, I don't paint realistically, but I do paint what's real. And for me, that's those emotions and feelings. I love that. And can, can you speak more about, you know, you made these pieces and someone's like, they're confrontational, they're melancholy. And you're like, no, I want happy, good things in the world. Like, right. where are you with that? Like, can, can confrontational melancholy be a, a good thing in the world? Like, what do you think about that today? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think that people feel better when they feel connected. And I feel really connected to other people's vulnerability, right? Like your own vulnerability is a little much sometimes, but when other people are vulnerable, I think it's really easy to feel connected to that for me, not for everybody, but for me, that's, that oftentimes is a, is sort of a channel for connectivity. And so I think it's easier to look at something that is, um, maybe a little bit broken, but trying hard, um, and to feel that vulnerability and feel connected than if it was like a, you know, shiny, like that doesn't feel as real. Sometimes it is right. But mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to make things that are real and that people feel connected to. Um, and I'm not going for perfect. I'm trying to make them actually, I mean, real. I'm trying to make them relatable, I guess is the word I'm trying to say. And I yeah. think that most people are not jazz hands, smiley, happy all the time. Most people, I mean, I think everybody that's paying attention to the world is a little bit heartbroken sort of all the time. And maybe you're happy too, but that that heartbroken part is is part of us, and I think people feel connected to it. Yeah, and and as a fellow consumer of art, um, I think th what the point you make about connection, I think there's a lot of joy in that. When it's like when I, you know, when I look at it, and there's like a connection of somebody feeling my sorrow, or there's actually, ironically, joy in there, where it's like, yeah. oh. Oh yeah, I'm so I'm not the only one. Yes, for sure. And there's always a little bit of hope in everything I paint. That's another sort of theme. There's always, even if she looks, you know, sort of devastated, there's always just a little bit of a corner or a little bit of sparkle in that eye. Like I don't paint anybody who's a hundred percent devastated. They're always like, I mean, they've seen some rough times, but I think they're gonna be all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so speaking of this brokenness, can you, I don't even know. Oh, you, I see you've got some, some sculptures. Can you tell us about your process with, can you show us one sure. up close or two and 
tell us a bit about the process of how you make these. Cause I think this is fascinating. Just so you can see how tiny she is. I love these little people. So, um, so sculptures are, I'm new to sculpture, but I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing it with a different medium. They're the same little people. They're the same kind of stories. And I start with, this one was a little baby jam jar. So I start with something that's been discarded, something that's been thrown out or um, something that's cracked or broken, like a little broken vase or a salt shaker or something like that. And then I, I build on those. So this is an example. So I build like an armature out of tape and uh, this is probably got some aluminum foil, some kind of stuff. And then I clay over them and, uh, and that part's really fun. And I kind of bulge them out. If they're anything that's too symmetrical, I make like a weird bulge because I want them to be the same kind of relatable, like imperfect. And then, um, and then I paint them. And then sometimes I stick weird things like this. I got out of the trash. It was like a little brooch or something like that, but I thought it was pretty cute. Um, and then I carry them around for a while and I decide who they are and I get to know them and then I give them a name. And then when they're ready, they go out into the world and I love them. I think they're super cute and they are all sort of had that same little heartbroken um, look to them. This one is growing out of a little like um, flower pot. I don't know if you can see a little flower pot. Yeah. Yeah. But I love it when I, when somebody goes up and is like, oh my gosh, this reminds me so much of my sister. And it is like a head growing out of a pot. Like with, <laughs> yeah. I love that people find their sister, you know, in these. So that's, that's what I'm trying to make out of them is something taken from something that's a little bit broken on the inside and somebody else threw it away and then making it into something that other people recognize whether it's in themselves or in their sister or someone else they love, like, oh, there's, I see, I can see beauty in that imperfect little head growing out of something. That makes me oh. so happy. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I, I have a question and I don't know if, I don't know if it's a fair question. I don't know if you can answer it or even if you know how to answer it. So if it's not a fair question, we can skip it. But it, if, 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 if someone, were, you know, someone who knows you really well, they know you as a person really well and they know your art. Would they be surprised? No. Okay. I think the people, um, I think the people that know me really well are very, um, it's really easy to recognize my art. Um, I think that people that don't know me super, super well uh, are maybe more surprised. I think that I often present like Jazz this. Hands. Yes, I think I think I uh, I look like an extrovert. I think I look social to uh, to to strangers. But I think the people that really know me know that I am that sometimes, and sometimes I'm in my basement for long periods of time by myself because that's yeah. really where I refuel. Yeah, yeah. And we had talked about this a little bit that we both have this in our careers that you go down to the basement and you're by yourself and you're in, you know, the bunk beds are there and you're claiming the space and doing your thing. And yeah. then it's like out into the world to the art show, which right. is very different energy than the basement. And I have that, I'm in my studio, I'm writing music. It's me, it's God, it's whatever. And then it's like up onto the stage. So can you speak to that at all? Um, yes, and I actually, figured this part out in the last year. It's pretty exciting and it's changed how I do things. I realized that I am both of those people and I can be authentic in both those roles, but one of those gives me energy and one of those depletes energy. So when I'm in the basement by myself, I don't need to eat or drink or do any of those. Like I could stay down there for days and days and days and just I mean, every once in a while, my family will come down with like a plate of food and be like, hey, <laughs> the world. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when I go out into the world, like at art shows and I'm connecting with lots of people, it's an important thing for me to do. Like, I, I think it's really great. And also it's really draining. So yeah. teaching too. I love teaching. It's great. I can totally jazz hands. I can, you know, I love that. It's awesome. And then I need to sleep for like three days. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. it is uh, just energy going out. I, yeah. It's awesome. It's fun. And I'm exhausted afterwards. Yep. Yep. So I, I'd like to ask you, um, 
you know, we have a lot of artists and artists in waiting and hobbyists who might want to become professional or hobbyists who want to stay hard. I mean, we have people at all levels who will be listening to this. And um, I like to ask this question because so many of us need courage. And I, I want to ask if there's something you've learned from your journey that you could impart to somebody who also feels like I've got not exactly what Rebecca Berman has, but I've got my own version of something that's like waiting to come out. And how do I even do it? And how do I start? And how do I get there? She's like, do you have some words of encouragement? Yes. Oh my gosh, do it. It's the best thing in the world that you can do. And I, I, I started a business. I started an art um, studio just for people that were not artists, including myself. I was not an artist when I opened an art studio. I, I just wanted to be one, but was too sort of, I'm like a type A plus personality. So <laughs> I just don't do stuff unless I'm like really sure I'm going to knock it out of the park. So I came to art. Um, I had other careers. And then at night, I just started kind of playing around with this paint stuff. And uh, and then I had a friend come down the basement and try this paint kind of stuff. And she was like, we should teach workshops. We should, we should start a business. And I was like, oh, really? Okay. So we did. And it was just for people that are not artists to come and make art. And there's huge value in that. And if, I mean, that's a great way to go. Just jump in there. Our uh, uh, Wonderlad Studios, that was our business. And Amy is my business partner is taking it over and she's going that route. And that's awesome. I decided during uh, COVID that I just really wanted to make art for real. Um, not that that wasn't for real, but like I wanted to not run a business because running a business makes it very hard to make art unless that is your business. So um, I just really started making. And the thing that has been, uh, that has made it possible for me is that I started, that's a really hard part. Um, and starting for me, uh, I had a lot of false starts. Like um, I, I was like, well, I'm just going to learn everything there is to know first. And then I'm going <laughs> to that's, that was not the right way. Or I'm going to just look at the internet and get so inspired by all the other people. <laughs> I think I did it for like three years. Like I was lost in Pinterest. And then, um, I've just yeah. never heard looking at the internet and inspired in the same sentence. <laughs> but right. go ahead. Not, that didn't work. It didn't matter. So a lot, a lot of a, a trial and error in my, in my journey, but what really does work, at least for me is actually, uh, making something with my hands. So for me, to start any project, it a lot of times I'm thinking, and I spend pretty much most of my life like right here. And then every once in a while, I get out of my head into my body, and then it kind of clears things out, and I can think a little bit more clearly. So if I start actually making something, and I, these are the perfect thing to make because I don't have to think about it, I don't even know what it's going to be yet, I can just start taping and whatever, then things get going for me. And then, mm. so start and then keep going. It sounds so dumb, but for me to like keep going, I get really overwhelmed with all the things that I could make or the ideas. So I write when I'm in like, I'm stuck mode, I make my next steps, but they're like minuscule. Like I'll write down, like spend 10 minutes thinking about this word, like I have to be really specific and small, mm. to be able to be creative. Like I, anytime I'm stuck, I just have to make the box even smaller, which is why I only painted heads growing out of vases for a whole year. Like mm. gotta be a yeah. head, gotta be a vase, gotta be sitting on a table. That's it. Like yeah. in here's your seven colors. Like to me to like make, make the assignment more specific. Yeah. Wow. Easier to be more uh, create love that. I love that. My version of that is what do I know? I'm like, there has to be a tiny thing in here that I know. Maybe it's the key of oh, the song, I love that. but it's always like, what, what is like, cause I know that I know something, I know it's going to be a slow song. I know. And it's interesting. Cause you're, you're talking about like tiny. And I think what I know tends to be like really big and not specific, but it's like, okay, at least I know that at least I know it's going to be like a three minute song you know, something. So yeah. I love that we all have these different starting points. And when you said start and keep going, I really was like starting to tear up hearing you say that because 
I know the, like you said, it's like, oh, it sounds so silly. Of course you start, of course you keep going. No, most people don't start and mo most people don't keep going. And both of those, and then and the starting again, and then the starting again, and the keep going again, and the, the valleys and the peaks. I mean, it's just really, um, it's, uh, it's a life it's a life it's a lifetime so the starting and the keep going is just very deep and very long yes and i hope i i love that you are creating all these like worlds for people to be like this i think it's really important and for me it's really important to have these groups and to surround myself with other people that understand because not everybody's life is like this um not everybody's career is like this. I've had lots of careers and they're not usually like this. And so I've been really lucky um, because once you start and then you like keep going, there's always like the, and then it's sort of, you have to stop and start and stop and start, at least for me. And the thing that helps me get started again often is the people around me that understand this, that, mm -hmm. and a lot of times it's not even me going to other people and saying like, I'm having a terrible time and I don't know what to do. It's somebody else coming to me and being like, I'm stuck and I'm terrible and I don't know how to paint or I don't know how to do anything and bleh, like that. And I'm like, you're great. What are you talking about? And like getting to be friends with artists and poets and songwriters and it, it's, it's good for you. It's good for you because you get to talk people off the ledge, you know, the, the <laughs> ledge, ledge. And like, I think it soaks in better for me to, yeah. to tell other people like, you're going to be all right. Like, <laughs> you wanna, yeah, yeah. I should do that. I should do that too. <laughs> totally. Um, Rebecca, where can we find you? Where can we find your work? Where can we buy your work? Awesome. So I, um, if you're in Denver, I'll be at the summer art or uh, yeah, summer art market, the Art Students League, in the end of August, the 28th, 29th, maybe. That's in Denver, so that'll be in person and super super fun. Um, online, it's RebeccaBermanArt.com or Facebook, Instagram, Rebecca Berman Art. Um, and I've got a new project that I am launching with a couple other artists that is launched yesterday. Mm. Um, exciting it's called art first studios and it's a new concept for um, artists and art collectors to come together in like a boutique style intimate space it's kind of like an online gallery show that's based around story so really letting it's all about connection I can't even help it right that's that's my <laughs> that's my thing yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's about connecting um, artists and collectors like really getting to tell your story, really getting to make the art that you love and the and talking about the process and showing what's most important to you and then bringing in the collectors that love to hear the story, you know, the behind the scenes and love artists and love art. It's gonna be amazing. So you should all go on there. It's artfirststudios.com. There's just a landing page uh, as of today, but the first big show is coming in February which is going to be amazing. You're all invited. Wow. Congrats on the launch. Congrats on the launch. Rebecca, thank you so much for sharing of yourself, your time, your art with us. This has been another amazing uh, uh, episode of Spotlight On. Thank you so much for being with us and have fun in the basement. Have fun <laughs> in the shows. Good luck with the new venture. And I'm going to keep uh, watching you and your work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been absolutely delightful. I've loved following your career and listening to your music and just your lovely voice. Even talking is so, so soothing and important. I'm glad I got to hear you. And uh, thanks for having me. Thank you, Rebecca.